Good, good afternoon. We'd like everybody to grab a seat so we can get started. Thank you so much. If you can't find a seat, there's lots of standing room, which is wonderful for an event like this. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Milligan. I'm the executive director of St. Francis Life, and I want to welcome you all here. It's a beautiful afternoon, and uh, we just thank you for having the opportunity. At the end, we will have some tours if people haven't had an opportunity to see. I have three people that I'm going to introduce. The first two are we have something at Life that's called a Participant um, Advisory Council, which is made up of the participants that we take care of in our program, and they make sure they give us feedback on what we're doing well and what we're not doing well, and ideas for the future. So just to make sure that the participants were represented today, we've invited two of our PAC members. They can stand up if they want, Ms. Brenda Brown and Ms. Maudie Webb. They're two of the people of why we here at St. Francis Life come to work every day. So we thank you guys for being here. We really appreciate it. And secondly, I'd like to introduce you to the CEO, President and CEO of St. Francis Healthcare. I'm going to read a little bit, Dave, just because your bio is. Me. <laughs> uh, Dave is the President and CEO of St. Francis Healthcare. He's a proven leader with strong ties to the region. Before joining St. Francis, he since April. He was president and CEO of St. Michael's Medical Center in New Jersey and has held senior executive positions at Abington Memorial Hospital, Albert Einstein Healthcare Network, and also the Germantown Hospital and Medical Center. And now we're lucky to have him here in the state of Delaware at St. Francis Health Career. So Dave, take it away. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I have a real easy job, so I will not bore you with a lot, but I wanted to Welcome you here uh, to our uh, Life Pro site. Uh, I'm glad we were able to have some participants here because the joy of, of being able to be here when the participants he are here is phenomenal. Um, it, it, makes, it makes you feel younger uh, just to be able to watch them engaged with each other, with the staff, uh, and having a place to come to that takes care of their needs but also is en enables them to go back home. And so we're thrilled to be able to offer the program. We're looking at s establishing a second site. Um, and I'm glad we were chosen today to host this event because I think it fits into exactly what the governor and, and the secretary are trying to achieve. Uh, it's now my distinct honor to introduce Dr. Carol uh, Odom Walker, who is the cabinet, secre cabinet secretary for the Delaware Department of Health and Social Services. Uh, they confuse me because they also add all the initials, so I just see too many <laughs> uh, initials, so I'm going to try. Oh, that's okay. I'm gonna, it's my, I only get one show a day, so I have to, uh, <laughs> I got to make it up. Uh, sh uh, she has a tremendous background. Uh, in, in many ways, I'm envious. Uh, she has a chemical engineering degree from the University of Delaware. Her medical degree is from Jefferson Medical College, uh, a master's of public health, from Johns Hopkins, and a master's in health services research from UCLA. I, I don't know how you fit all that in, <laughs> frankly, but that, that is really impressive. Um, she is a board-certified family physician who has provided care to uninsured and underserved populations and actually spent time in a PACE program and during her training, she told me just earlier. Um, she previously worked as Deputy Chief Science Officer at the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute in DC, uh, and as secretary, she is charged with keeping Delawareans healthy, ensuring that they get the health care they need, and providing children, families, and seniors with essential social services. Dr. Walker. Thank you. Now you know I just like to learn and have lots more to learn. Thank you, Dave, so much for your words and for hosting this ceremony in this beautiful space. It's so important to have St. Francis Life here. You show what innovation in healthcare can look like and what it means to patients and families. Before I begin, I want to make some acknowledgments. I want to acknowledge Wilmington Mayor Mike Perzicki. He's coming, yes, enjoying the stroll. <laughs> On the boat. 
Also, Christiana Care President and CEO, Dr. Janice Nevin. The Insurance Commissioner, Trinidad Navarro, is here. Secretary of Finance, Rick Geisenberger. Dr. Taylor, the Medical Society of Delaware President. Lolita Lopez with Westside Health. Dr. Nancy Fan, the Chair of the Healthcare Commission. Matt Swanson, the Chair of the Delaware Center for Health Innovation. And Dr. Jan Lee with DIN. I'm not going to say the all the words. That just reflects how important today is and that we are acknowledging the challenge in front of us. This summer, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services came out with an analysis of per capita spending in our state that showed that Delaware is ranked now number three, behind only Alaska and Massachusetts. And in 2014, our per capita spending was 27% above national average. In fact, if we continue at this pace, we know that the health care costs will push out other costs in our state budget. CMS estimated that Delaware's total health care spending will more than double from $9.5 billion in 2014, not a small number, to $21.5 billion in 2025. And yet we can do more in health rankings. Overall, right now, Delaware is ranked 31st by some in total health care rankings. We have to do better. Thanks to the leadership of Representative Longhurst and supported by members of both parties in the General Assembly, House Joint Resolution 7 gives the Department of Health and Social Services the authority to create a health care spending benchmark in the state. We know this is an opportunity to link health care spending to overall economic growth rate in our state. And with the support of Governor Carney, we will work with health care stakeholders and others up and down the state as we develop the benchmark and the governance for it. We'll build off the work of the Delaware Center for Health Innovation and set this target for healthcare spending that is better aligned with the growth of the state's economy. This benchmark will help us embrace the concept that we should be paying for value and not just volume. We should be paying for quality and not just visits. This makes sense. We want to reward providers for providing better health in our state and keeping people healthy. For consumers, the healthcare benchmark means increased transparency around quality and health outcomes. There's no question that all of us want to achieve our own personal optimal health. And that benchmark will offer a step in that direction. In a few minutes, you'll hear from a small business owner and a consumer, both of whom are worried about the rising healthcare costs in our state and how it impacts them and their families. House Joint Resolution 7 shows the state's commitment to them and to all Delawareans that we must reform health care into something that's paying for value and quality. Over the next month, I invite you to attend a series of summits. We held the first one today as we learn more about establishing the health care spending benchmark. We'll keep having this dialogue. We want to hear your input. Keep sending us your ideas so we can test it and put it to work. Together, we can improve health care outcomes, slow the growth of health care spending, and improve the quality of life in our state. And now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce the primary sponsor of House Joint Resolution 7, House Majority Leader Valerie Longhurst. Thank you so much for being here. She's obviously a tough act to follow. Um, first of all, I want to thank Amy for um, hosting us here today. We appreciate it. I didn't, usually I go to bill signings. I don't see this many people, so I know that this is something that's very important to a lot of people. Um, I do want to mention that I met with Secretary Walker early on in her um, career here in the General Assembly. She came to the Speaker's office, and the three of us had a conversation about health care. And I could say with 100% confidence that I can't think of anybody more qualified and that I have the most confidence to lead this charge in looking at these benchmarks. So um, you were very impressive, and I look forward to some great things that are going to come out of this. So thank you so much. Second of all, there's um, 62 legislators, and I'm actually the only one that's here. Senator McBride, who's a prime sponsor in the Senate, couldn't be here. And a lot of other legislators, it's kind of hard to get us all together during the summer months because we need a break from each other. Um, <laughs> so that's why I'm assuming they're not here because I know they care about this issue. 
Um, but I just want to let you know how much effort put into it. It was a bipartisan in leadership. It was one of the biggest discussions that we had as we faced over the last, um, I've been in the General Assembly 14 years, I've sat through three governors and we've kicked the can down the road so many times on health care, rising health care, that I want to commend the governor and the bipartisanship that we had in the House of Representatives and the Senate to actually bring this resolution forward. It was done on a collaborative effort where we had to cut a lot of things, we had to raise a lot of revenue, and we've done that over the years, but we really haven't addressed this. So I commend the governor and the secretary and everybody in the General Assembly for moving this forward today. Um, I know as somebody who's very active um, doing, as I see, you know, doing triathlons, I know how healthy practices are important in society and making sure that we stay healthy. But with the, the complicated component of the rising cost of health care, we can't take step we can't take steps backward, we have to move them forward. And as a big proponent of you know, healthy Delaware, I don't think we can do enough, but we can't keep going backwards. But I know that this resolution, if I could just um, kind of outline what this resolution actually does, the resolution authorizes the Secretary of Delaware Department of Health and Social Service and various stakeholders to analyze payments, reform, and healthcare costs in an effort to implement an annual benchmark that benchmark would help stakeholders improve the health of Delawareans by finding ways to improve health services quality and reduce costs. And we have to find a sustainable path forward. And I think with this resolution, it may not happen tomorrow that we'll see some impact. It may not happen the next year, but hopefully down the road, um, Delaware will see some costs going down instead of continuing going up. So I want to thank everybody in this room. I don't know who 